the uh, last session we were discussing about the fundamentals of partnership uh, wherein we have discussed a uh, few concepts like uh, first of all we discussed about the definition of partnership as for the indian partnership act 1932 then uh, we have also covered the various features of partnership and then we talked about the partnership deed and its content other than that we have also discussed uh, about certain situation uh, regarding which if partnership deed is silent then how uh, how how such situation is dealt according to the partnership act 1932 so before proceeding further we will first of all revise everything and if you guys have any doubt uh, regarding the topic that we have already discussed so you can ask your doubt and then only we will proceed with a new topic so first of all let's start with the revision so in the previous session we discussed the definition of the partnership and i have told you that the uh, partnership has been defined under section 4 of the partnership act 1932 which uh, define the partnership as the relationship between two or more person two or more person who are agree to who who have agreed to share the profits of a business and that business can be carried on by all of them collectively or by any of them Uh, acting on behalf of all the person. Then uh, we have discussed few features of the partnership, wherein I have told you that uh, it is mandatory to have the agreement uh, in order to start a partnership uh, business. But that agreement can be in writing; it can be uh, done orally. It completely depends upon the discretion or the choice of the partners. A partner wants to make the agreement in writing; they can. Uh, they can have a written agreement otherwise they can also enter into a partnership business without uh, anything in writing they can simply orally discuss the terms and condition but obviously if you uh, enter into partnership with a particular with the, the persons without uh, uh, agreeing to the terms and condition in writing then there is always a possibility of dispute and uh, that dis settlement of dispute will be very difficult if the if if the terms and condition is not in the written form so it is always advised uh, advise uh, it is always advised that all the agreement must be in the written terms so that any dispute can be easily settled in future other than that we have also talked about the minimum and the maximum number of uh, person uh, that uh, is possible in a partnership form and here i have told you that minimum number uh minimum person required is 2 and maximum can be 15 then there should be a business and that business must be legal and there the business must be carried down with the objective of maximizing or earning profit and such profit must be shared among the partners if partners have agreed regarding how profit shall be shared then the profit of the firm will be shared according to the agreement but if there is no agreement regarding the sharing of profit then according to the partnership act 1932 says it says that profit shall be divided equally among the partners then we have also discussed the liability of partners in case of firm in case of partnership business so partnership act 1932 says that the liability of all the partners shall be unlimited it cannot be limited to the value of the amount they have invested in the business or the property that they own in the business but the liability will extend to their private properties as well registration obviously partnership business can be carried out without being registered but obviously certain limitation will get attracted if you do not register your uh, partnership business then we have also talked about the mutual agency mutual agency is nothing but The, uh, the uh, you can say the agent and principal relationship between the partners. Uh, partners acting on behalf of the other is considered as the agent. All other partners should be considered as the principal. So there is always part uh, uh, the relationship of agent and principal among the partners. That means act performed by one partner shall be uh, all other partners shall be liable for that particular act. any obligation incurred by one person shall automatically get applied to the other partners as well and then we discuss about the transferability of share so 
whether there is a possibility to share or transfer the share to some other person any any partner can transfer the share to some other person the answer is no uh, a person can transfer a share only if other partners agree to that without the consent of the partner without the consent of other partner one cannot transfer his part of share to some other person then we discuss about the partnership date here i have told you that partnership date is nothing but the it is just a just an agreement among the partners and this agreement uh, is done to specify the terms and condition of the business terms and condition of the partnership and so why partnership deed what is the importance of partnership deed is in the partnership business so it is important uh, because it can be used to settle any kind of dispute among the partners it can be served as an evidence in the eyes of law and it regulate the or uh, uh, the duties and the uh, you can say the obligations of the partners in a business okay then we have also discussed about the content of the partnership deed other than that uh, i have told you that if if partnership deed is silent about any of any of these things like how profit will be shared how whether interest on capital will be paid or not or salary or commission will be paid to a partner or not interest how interest how advances how interest on loan will be treated and interest on drawing will be charged or not so if partnership deed does not specify anything about these things then partnership act says that profits in a business shall be shared equally interest on capital cannot be availed by the partners salary and commission will not be paid to the partner unless and until it is specifically agreed among the partners and uh, loan will obviously loan will always fetch a interest of 6% per annum for any person who is uh renting who is who is providing any kind of loan to the business then uh, after that interest on drawing there will be no interest applicable on the drawing made by the partner unless it is specifically agreed among the partners so these things we have discussed in the previous session apart from this we have also i think we have done this question in the previous class and uh, i have i think i have given you one question as homework so have you guys completed this question or not the question to is everybody have done this question so or anyone is having any doubt on this but yeah it's a exam have you guys done this question or not yes sir yes so you guys have any doubt you want to ask anything or shall we proceed to the next question No doubts. No doubts. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, considering that all of you have attempted this and you guys have no doubt, I'm moving to the next question. We will be doing one similar question. But prior to this, I want to discuss few more points. See, <coughs> just a minute. Before attempting this question, we need to understand few things regarding. Partnership business. Just a minute. Yeah. See, so uh, in case of partnership business, we need to remember certain certain things. First is. first point is any profit generated using fund of the firm by any partner shall be attributed to the firm so what does this mean it means that let's suppose there are two partners or let's suppose there are three partners a b and c and mr a has used fund let's suppose rupees 50000 that belongs to the firm mr a is using rupees 50000 he has invested this particular amount and let's suppose he have invested this amount somewhere and on this investment of rupees 50000 he have generated a profit of rupees profit of rupees let's suppose 20000 
is this clear? Mr. A is using fund of rupees fifty thousand. This this amount belongs to the firm. This is not personal amount of Mr. A. This amount belongs to the firm, belongs to the business. And now after making the investment, after making investment, Mr. A has generated a profit of rupees twenty thousand. So tell me, is this the personal profit of Mr. A? Will uh, uh, th this amount needs to be shared among the among the other partner or not? Or he can take the entire amount. Anyone? He have Mr. A have used this fund that belongs to the firm. He have invested this amount in a particular, uh, you can say, in a particular venture, and he have generated a certain amount of profit. Anyone? Please tell me. This is this profit completely. Belongs to Mr. A, or he shall attribute this profit to the, uh, you can uh, the 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 to the other partners of the firm. Tell me, he have to attribute this profit to the other partners of the firm or not? He have to give this profit to the firm or not? Or he can personally have the entire amount of profit? Alexander, anyone else? Is my question to all of you? Sir, uh, I think he should share the profits equally. He will have to share the profit. Whether he will have to share the profit equally or not, it completely depends upon the agreement. But let's say for now, because this amount does not belong to Mr. A, this amount belongs to the firm. So any profit generated on this amount shall be shall be attributed to the other partners as well. Shall be divided divided among the Other partners of the business as well, right? So this is the first point here that you need to remember. First point is that any profit generated using funds of the firm by any partner shall be attributed to the firm. Tell me, guys, everything is clear on screen? Do I need to zoom in? Shall I zoom in? Or everything I have written on the sheet is clear? Okay, all right. So, presuming that everything is clear, so I hope first point is clear to all of you. Any profit generated using fund of the firm by any partner shall be attributed to the firm. That means shall be divided among the partners of the firm. But let's suppose someone and let's suppose any partner have used certain fund that belongs to the firm. He have invested this amount in a particular venture. And instead of generating profit, this person have incurred a loss. Instead of generating profit of rupees twenty thousand, what if Mr. A have generated a twenty thousand loss? So, is it possible that he can divide this loss among the other partners? Tell me. Like we were dividing the profit among the other partners, even uh, if partners have given consent on using that amount or not. In similar situation, let's suppose Mr. A have borrowed certain, or Mr. A have used certain fund that belongs to the firm, invested this in a particular venture, and instead of generating profit, what if he have generate he have incurred a loss of rupees twenty thousand? So he will have to bear this loss personally, or he can ask for the contribution by the other partners as well. Then. Whether he will be entitled to ask for the contribution by the other partners as well, or he will have to bear the entire amount of loss on his own. My question is clear to all of you guys. Sir, so he he, he will, will have, have to. He will have to. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. He will have he can to. Ha he he can ask for the contribution. Yes. See, let me repeat my question. Mr. A is using fund of the firm, fund of the business, without the consent. Without the consent, B and C have not given any consent to use this fund. Without informing B and C, Mr. A is using the fund of the business, investing it in a particular venture, generating a profit. If he generates profit. Then this profit needs to be divided, needs to be attributed among the other partners as well. 
but in case of loss treatment will be different in case of loss if he have withdrawn certain fund from the business invested in a particular venture instead of generating profit if he have incurred loss this loss will be borne by mr a personally he cannot ask for the contribution for the loss by the other partner mariam is writing this sir if he is stakeholder then he have to bear the loss correct he will have to bear the loss alone he can he cannot ask for the contribution by the other partner this loss cannot be shared so one thing is very clear if you if you uh, use fund that belongs to the business invest in a particular venture generates profit that profit need to be divided among the partners that means that this profit belongs to the firm but if you have misappropriated some fund generated invested in a particular venture generated loss incurred loss then this loss shall be borne by that particular partner personally no one is going to contribute for that loss okay i hope everything is clear to all of you so let me show you the second part. so the second point is any losses incurred by using fund of the firm by any partner shall only be borne by that partner only is that clear to all of you two points are clear first two points are clear or not let me yes sir yes sir okay. Okay. yes okay moving on point number c now in point c it is written that in order to take any decision now this is very very important In 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 a partnership business, since there are two or more person can be there, so whenever any decision need to be taken in a partnership firm, most of the decision shall be taken on the basis of the consent of the partners. If partners is giving giving consent to a particular act, then only such act can be performed in a partnership business. Let's suppose there are three partners A, B, and C, and <clears throat> a b and c and for me to take any particular decision regarding anything let's suppose uh, firm wants to take decision regarding particular activity of the business and in order to take any decision regarding business we need to ask for the consent of the partner a b and c all the partner need to give their consent but the, but the important thing here is that any decision in a partnership business can be taken if majority of the partners agree to that if majority of the partners agree majority partners agree let's suppose if there are three partners then if two partners agrees on a particular uh, uh, if if two partners uh, are in favor of a particular activity then such activity can be conducted and if two partners are against that particular activity then such activity cannot be conducted as simple as that so the thing is that all the decision in a partnership business are taken on the basis of the consent of the partner but as far as the consent is concerned majority consent of the majority partner will be considered is that clear to you any activity can be performed can be undertaken only if majority of the partner agrees to that to that but but if if we want to enter a new partner let's suppose a wants to introduce a new partner this is a new partner d in order to introduce a new partner majority consent is not applicable in order to introduce a new partner we need to have the consent of all the partners in this case majority consent will not be applicable if we want to introduce a new partner then we will have to then we will have to take the consent of all the partners so this is the point number c and d pay attention and try to understand point number c here is that in order to take any decision regarding business consent of majority partner shall be taken we need we need not to take the consent of all the partners in order to in order to take the decisions of the business but as far as the 
decision regarding admission of partner admission of new partner then consent of all the partners will be required in this situation majority consent is not applicable we need to have the consent of all the partners in order to introduce a new partner tell me guys all four points are clear to you first point was about how a uh, profit will be treated if uh, a, a, if a particular partner have misappropriated fund for his personal use so i have told you that that such profit shall be divided among the other partners as well but if there is if if he have incurred losses by misappropriating the funds of the business then he have to bear the losses of the uh, losses on his own he cannot ask for the contribution then uh, point number c uh, i have told you that in order to take any decision majority consent of the majority of the partner is applicable but in order to introduce a new partner we, we need to take the consent of all the partners tell me guys everything is clear till this point yes sir so guys i want all of you to take the screenshot of this please uh, i'll be sharing this note in the uh, group as well but for the time being just take the screenshot of it let and, and just tell me when you are done done sir done all right so now we can proceed with the question now let's let's discuss question number 3 So question is clear to all of you. I hope. Question number three says: Following differences have arisen among P, Q, and R. State who is correct in each case. So uh, P, Q, R. There are three partners, and there are differences. Uh, differences have arisen among these partners, and differences have regarding these five points. And we need to settle the differences. We need to settle the dispute. So the for first. a uh, difference first dispute is that p used rupees 20000 belonging to the firm and made a profit of rupees 5000 right p have used 20000 that belongs to the firm and by using this fund he have uh, generated a 5000 profit now q and r wants want the amount to be given to the firm q and q and r want that this amount should be given to the firm tell me how this situation will be that whether this amount shall be divided among the partners or not well, tell me whether the contention of the q and r is right or wrong so they are right they are right correct because this amount belongs to the firm so therefore the profit also belongs to the firm as simple as that now point number b dispute second q use rupees 5000 belonging to the firm and suffered a loss of rupees 1000 now he wants the firm to bear the loss question is clear to all of you so q have uh, used 5000 that belongs to the firm and by using this fund he have generated generated a loss of 1000 now he want that this loss should be bear by the firm tell me whether q's contention is right or wrong will he be able That's to wrong. correct he's wrong is wrong he won't be able to uh, uh, attribute this loss towards the firm he will have to bear the loss personally okay point number c p u p and q want to purchase goods from a limited and r does not agree again there are three partners now so p and q agree to purchase a particular good from a limited but regarding the purchase of goods r is not agree he is saying that we should not purchase goods from a a limited so tell me uh, whether good good can be purchased from a limited or not because all the partners are, are not consented on this particular decision so they can purchase because majority can purchase since majority partners are agreeing to purchase the goods from a limited so this, i think they will be able to purchase the goods right in order to take any kind of decision majority consent is required all partner need, need not to be consented okay now point d q and r want to admit c as partner and p is not agree tell me whether q and r will be able to admit partner c or not 
No. Then P is not agreed. No. Why? Because in order to admit a new partner, we need to have the consent of all the partners. Okay. <clears throat> now the last one, point E. R had given a loan of one lakh to the firm and demanded interest at the rate ten percent per annum. P and Q do not want to pay the interest. Tell me how it will be treated. R have given a loan. R has given a loan of one one lakh, and he is asking interest on such loan at the rate ten percent per annum. But P and Q are denying. P are P and Q are not agreeing to pay the interest at all. Whether R will be entitled to ask for the interest or not. Whether he will be able to claim the interest on the loan or not, we have covered this topic yesterday. In the um, agreement, then he can. Sorry, sorry. If it's in the agreement, he can ask. Got it. So he is saying that if there is already an agreement regarding payment of interest, then R will be able to ask for the interest. He will be able to claim the interest. That is correct. But uh, what if there is no there is no agreement regarding that? Then and he can't ask. He won't be able to ask for that. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Sir, he can ask six percent. See, if there is an agreement entered among the partner regarding the payment of interest at the rate of ten percent per annum, then Mr. R is entitled to claim the interest at the rate ten percent per annum. Okay. But if there is no agreement regarding payment of interest. There is no agreement at all. Then also, Mr. A will be entitled to claim the interest on loan, and at what percentage? At the rate of at six percent per annum, right? Because Partnership Act 1932 says that even if there is no agreement regarding the interest on loan, and in in that situation also, partner who is providing loan to the firm is entitled. To claim interest at the rate six percent per annum. That means whether there is an agreement or not, R will be able to claim the interest. But if there is, there is a if there is already an agreement regarding interest payment, he will be able to claim interest at that according to that agreement. If there is no agreement, he will be entitled to claim interest at the rate six percent per annum. All right, everyone. And if anybody having any doubt, is everything clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Very good. So, uh, I'm moving to the next question. I hope all these things are clear to you. And I'm 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 also showing the solution of this question. Just a moment. So these are the explanation of the question. Like in the point A, the the case one was uh, uh, where P is uh, P have used twenty thousand belonging to the firm and made a profit of five thousand. This. Need to be explained in this manner. See, this is how you will be explaining this. P is bound to pay twenty thousand together with the profit of rupees five thousand to the firm because this amount belongs to the firm. And we need we also we are also required to give the explanation to that. Uh, in the explanation, we can write down as per the principal and agent relationship, P is the principal, and uh, as well as the agent to the firm. As per this rule, any profit earned by agent. Belongs to the firm. So this is how you can explain the different uh, different disputes and resolve these different disputes. Okay, so guys, I want all of you to first of all take the screenshot of this question. Please take the screenshot of this question so that uh, whenever you will you will revise, you can go through this question again. Also, take the screenshot of the solution explanation. I can show the question again, sir. Yeah. Solution. Solution to point A and B, and point C and D. Let's take the screenshot of this as well. Last one. But can you show <clears throat> point A and B? Yes, 
sí. Hubo un mes. Hubo un mes. All right. Now we are moving to the next question. Question four. Okay, this one is pretty simple. I think we will be able to do it uh, within five minutes. Now, question is A, B, C are partners. Again, there are three partners. They have no partnership agreement. Oh, so there is no partnership deal this time. It has already mentioned the question. And they have faced the following problems. Obviously, since there is no agreement, there is going to have the problem. Now, the problem first is A wants that interest on capital should be allowed to the partners, but B and C do not agree. Tell me, guys. A have contributed certain capital into the business. Now, Mr. A wants that on his capital contribution, he shall be paid interest on his contribution. But B and C are not agreeing to that. Tell me whether A will be able to claim interest on capital or not. As per the partnership at 1935. Since it is already, already mentioned, na, since it is already mentioned that there is no agreement regarding payment of interest. Since there is no partnership deed, that means there is no prior agreement regarding payment of interest on capital. Now, now, Mr. A is claiming interest on capital, but B and C is denying to that. Tell me whether A will be able to claim the interest or not. Sir, not allowed. Correct. Interest on capital is not allowed unless specifically agreed upon. If Mr. A have already entered into an agreement between uh, 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 with the B and C, then he will be able to claim the interest. But since there is no agreement regarding that, and Partnership Act 1932 also says that a partner contributing capital cannot claim any interest on his contributions. So therefore, contention of B and C is correct. A is wrong. Next point. Point B. B wants that partner should be allowed to draw salary, but A and C do not agree. Tell me. B wants, the, wants that partner should be allowed to draw the salary you can presume that b you can say b is an active partner and all other a sleeping partner b is actively working and contributing to the uh, operations of, of the business now b wants that he need to be he should be paid salary for his contribution or participation in the operation of the business so tell me whether b will be successful uh, in in uh, claiming salary or not whether he will be entitled to claim the salary uh, no sir no. Since there is no agreement and Partnership Act says that partner cannot claim interest without any agreement. If there is agreement, he will be able to claim the salary. But if there is no agreement regarding that, he won't be able to do that. Point number C. C wants, C wants that the loan given by him to the firm should bear the interest at the rate 10% per annum, but A and B do not agree. I think this is the this is exactly the same point that we have done in the previous question and i hope all of you can answer this tell me whether c will be able to claim the interest at the rate 10 percent or no if he will be able to claim then at how much percent he will be able to claim the interest six percent six percent Correct. six percent per okay last one a and b having contributed large amount of capital desire that the profit should be divided in the ratio of their capital contribution. But C do not agree. Since A and B have contributed larger proportion of the capital. So both of both these partners are uh, saying that part, uh, profit of the business shall be uh, divided among the partner as per their profit contribution. But since C have contributed only a small proportion and he's obviously he will not agree to that. The, the thing is that whether A and B can ask for the uh, contribution of profit as uh, in their capital contribution, according to their capital contribution or in the ratio of capital contribution. 
No, sir. It should be divided equally. It should be divided equally. Profit can be divided according to the ratio of capital contribution only if partners have agreed upon upon that. But if there is no agreement, profit can only be shared equally, irrespective of capital contribution. Irrespective of whether partner have con anyone have contributed larger proportion of the capital or the small proportion of the capital, this is irrelevant. Profit need to be divided among all the partners equally if there is absence of the partnership deal. Okay, so this is it, guys. Uh, there were four questions that we need to discuss regarding the previous topics. Now moving on to a new topic, and in this topic we will discuss about the first one. We will discuss about the Treatment of interest on loan. Treatment of interest on loan. Uh, we already have discussed a little about the interest, how interest on loan shall be treated. Uh, but this time we will be uh, we will be discussing few numerical based on interest on loan. And probably we will also try to uh, discuss the general entries of uh, regarding the interest on loan. So starting with first of all. How treatment of loan will be done in a partnership business? So there is there are two possibilities. Uh, possibilities can be divided into two broad categories. Number one, interest on how it will be treated, how interest on loan will be treated, it depends it depends upon the agreement. If there are if there is agreement among the partners, then interest on loan shall be treated as per the agreement. If agreement says that partner will be paid interest at the rate twelve percent, ten percent, eight percent, so however or in whatever way partnership deed explain the treatment of the interest on loan, then accordingly it will be dealt. But if there is no agreement, if partnership deed is not specifying anything how how interest on loan will be will be uh, will be dealt with, then then in that case. Partnership Act 1932 is applicable, and as all of you already know that Partnership Act 1932 says that if there is no agreement among the partner regarding the uh, payment of interest on loan, then Partnership says Partnership Act says that uh, partner is entitled to claim interest at the rate six percent per annum. He will be entitled to claim interest at the rate six percent per annum. Okay, now now we need to discuss the general entries regarding the interest then partnership firm is paying interest to the uh, partner against the advance that he have made to the firm in that case we need to pass the general entries and uh, general entry i want all of you to write it down please general entries for treatment of interest on loan how general entries will be passed when partnership firm is paying the interest on loan to the partner see so there will be two entries that need to be done firstly the first general entry will be for the Let me show you. First general entry will be for interest due. When interest rate interest is due, then a, a general entry will be done. And one general entry will be done when the interest is getting is is uh, getting transferred to the profit and loss account. So let me write it down. Notebook shall be just. Okay. Interest, interest. 
All right, everyone. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I was saying that whenever interest on loan is paid to the partner, then you are not required to note it down. Just try to understand this. Interest on loan paid to partner. Whenever interest on loan is paid to partner, at the time of on, on, on payment of such interest on loan, we need to pass the general entry in the books of the partnership form. So right now we are discussing about what general entry need to be done in the books of the partnership form. So these two general entries required to be done in the books of the form. First general entry will be done when the interest is due. When interest is due, the general entry will be interest on loan account debit to partner's loan account. Since interest on loan is a kind of expense for the business, since it is a expense for the business, therefore we are debiting the interest on loan, right? We are debiting interest on loan because it is a, it is an expense from the uh, business money, the form from the firm's money, right? And after passing this general entry, we need to pass one more general entry to transfer this expense to the profit and loss account. And as we all know that any expense is debited to the profit and loss account, right? So therefore, in order to transfer this interest into the profit and loss account, we will be passing a new general entry that will be written like this, profit and loss account debit to interest on loan account. Okay. So I want all of you to just write it down. We will do one or two questions based on the similar same concept and then you will be able to understand this in a better manner. Please write this down.
Just let me know when you are done. Then everyone, Alexander Cushing says, vote. Adi, Maria. Sir, done. Done, okay. Everyone else, please, please let me know. Then yes, we will be able to start with yes, sir, start the question. Yes, sir, done. Yes, sir, done. Okay. Now, one more thing I want you to remember that you can see at the below of the screen, uh, you can see a note. Note says that interest loan is a charge against profit. It is a charge against profit, and it shall be paid even if there are even if there are losses in the form. You need to remember this point because it is going to be used in the question. Just keep this in mind that whenever there are profit in the business, firm need to pay the interest of the partner from that profit. Whenever there is profit. In the business, then firm is firm will be responsible to pay for the interest on loan of the partner. But even if there are losses, then also interest interest need to be paid, irrespective of whether firm is generating profit or the losses. Firm need to pay the interest to the partner. Partner's loan is treated similar to the loan given by the third party. If partner is contributing certain amount as a loan, it cannot be treated as if okay, partner is providing the loan. That means we can we can take this loan casually. We are not required to pay the interest on this loan. But even if partner is providing the loan, it will be treated as loan has been provided with by some third party. That means if if the firm is generating profit, then interest need to be paid from that profit. Even if firm is generating losses, then also. This interest need to be paid. So, irrespective of the profitability of the business, interest need to be paid to the partner. Therefore, it is called profit is a charge against the profit. Irrespective of the profitability profitability of the business, we need to pay the interest to the partner. Hope this point is clear to all. I'm moving with the question. Question number six. M and N are partners in a firm. M has given M has given a loan of rupees eight thousand to the firm on first July two thousand sixteen. The partnership deed is silent upon the question of provision of interest of on partner's loan. You need to compute the amount of interest to be payable on the advancement of loan by M to the firm, assuming that the books are closed on thirty first March. So this is the question. This is this one is pretty simple. We are just required to. Find out the amount of interest that need to be paid by the business to the partner on account of interest on loan. So uh, let me let me solve solve this question. Let me show you how to do that. But before that, I just wanted to know if the question is clear to all of you or not. Question is clear to all. Question basically says that there are two partner M and N. M is contributing. M is giving certain amount of loan to the business. Lo amount of loan is eight thousand. Amount has been given on first July two thousand sixteen. There is no agreement among uh, uh, between the partner that how how much interest will be paid against this loan. All right. Now we need to compute the interest that need to be payable by the business to to M for his uh, loan contribution. Question is clear to all. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So let me show you. How interest on loan is calculated? It is pretty simple. I I am I'm pretty sure that you, all of you will be able to understand this. Computation of interest on loan. Right. 
next to n. Okay. So Mr. M, the, the amount of loan that Mr. M has given to business is 8,000, right? Because there was no agreement between the partner that how much interest shall be paid on this amount. That means we will have to pay interest at the rate 6%, right? But because this loan has been given on 1st July 2000, just a minute. This loan has been given on 1st July 2016, right? And books are closing on 31st March 2016. So can anyone will be able to tell me that for how many months we need to pay the interest on this loan? Shall, uh, we will be required to pay the interest for the entire year or the interest will be payable for the time period for which loan has been given for the period of nine months or 12 months. See from July till March, it is only nine months, right? July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. So loan has been given to the firm uh, uh, for the period of nine months only. So shall we charge interest for the entire year or we shall we, we should charge the interest for nine nine months only tell me we will be charging interest for the entire year or we will be charging interest for the nine month period only come on yeah this this one is simple no? please answer please tell me for the entire year for the entire year okay anyone else want to try Alexander, sir, the the duration of uh, the loan. Duration of the loan, correct. See, if the loan has been given for, let's suppose if if I have given you given you a loan of rupees five lakh, let's suppose I am giving you a loan of rupees five five lakh for a period of two months only. You have utilized this amount for two month period, and you are returning it back to me after period of after two months. Then will I be entitled to claim the interest for the entire year? Can I ask you to pay the interest for, for, for the whole year? Even if I know that you have used this fund for only two months, answer is no. No, sir. Loan interest on loan can be, uh, shall be paid only for that period for which it, it is, uh, the loan has been used in the business. So in our case, in our example, amount has been borrowed on July and accounting is done on 31st March. So we will be paying the interest for nine months period only. Nine. For nine months, that means we need to multiply it by nine, divide it by 12. Nine by 12. Got it? So this is how we will be calculating the interest. Anyone, please tell me the total value after calculating this. 8,000 at the rate 6% into nine divided by 12. So it will be 360 days. Right? Any anyone having any doubt? No, Anybody? sir. Okay. Oh, see, question question is not asking for the general entry, but but I want all of you to make the general entry of this question. Let's try with the general entry also. General, how do we pass the general entry for the payment of interest? So general entry, as we know that there will be two general entries. First general entry will be for the, for, for interest due, then for transferring the interest to the property loss amount. So for general entry for interest, when interest is due. So when interest is due, general entry will be, tell me, anyone want to tell me what will be the general entry? when interest is due. It is pretty simple. Interest on loan account debit to to tell me to partners to loan account. partners account. Now, now here name of partner is M, right? So we are going to write down M's account partner who have given the loan to the business is M. So we, we are going to write down the name of the partner. Interest on loan account debit to M's account. Amount is 360 rupees. So this is the entry for making the interest due. Now at the time of transferring the interest to profit and loss account, 
transfer of interest. General entry will be profit and loss account debit to interest on loan account three hundred and sixty. This is it. Is it clear, everyone? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. So, uh, guys, we will do one, one more question, and then we will end. Our session. We will do uh, similar question. Here is the question. Question seven. Sita and Geeta are partners in a firm, sharing profit in the ratio of three to two. So obviously there are two partners, Sita and Geeta, and they are sharing their profits in the ratio of three to two. They had advance uh, advance to the firm a sum of rupees thirty thousand as a loan in their profit sharing ratio. So both of both these partners have collectively contributed thirty thousand as a loan, right? They have contributed this amount in their profit sharing ratio, and the loan has been given on first October two thousand seventeen. There is there is no partnership deed. Partnership deed was silent about the treatment of interest. We need to compute interest payable to the firm as per the Partnership Act nineteen thirty two, assuming that firm closes its book every year on thirty first March two thousand. Seventy or thirty-first March. Okay, so I hope question is clear to all. Two partners sharing their profits in the ratio of three to two contributed a certain sum to the business as a loan in their profit sharing ratio. That means in the ratio of three to two. On first October, we need to find out. We need to calculate interest on their loan contribution. Question is clear, all of you. Anyone having any doubt, understanding question? No, sir. No. Okay. So let's start with the solution. So first, in order to see, in order to find out, in order to calculate the interest on loan, we need to understand. We need to find out. How much amount both of them have contributed individually? What is the amount of loan given by Sita and what is the amount of loan given by? So total loan was total amount of loan. I want all of you to write it down, please. Total amount of loan is thirty thousand, and this loan has been. Given to the firm in their profit sharing ratio, that means in the ratio of three to two. So, loan given by Sita, loan of Sita. How do we calculate loan of Sita? Then it is pretty simple. Third, third ratio is ratio is three to two. So, in thirty thousand, Sita's contribution will be calculated as. Three upon five, and Geeta's contribution, loan of Geeta, will be calculated as thirty thousand into two upon five. Right? Ratio was three to two, so therefore, Sita's contribution will be three by five, and Geeta's contribution will be two by five. Now calculate the value. It will be. <clears throat> Ninety thousand divided by five, it will be eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand was given by Sita, and remaining amount obviously it will be twelve thousand. This was given by Sita. Right, everyone? Any anyone having any doubt, understanding this? We have just calculated the amount of loan till this point. We need to. We are still required to find out the interest on their loan.
calculation of interest on loan okay interest on loan will be there first of all let's talk about sita sita so loan amount of sita was 18000 right and since there was no agreement regarding payment of interest on loan so the interest that will be payable to her will be 6% per annum right yes, and loan was given on october right in the yeah. on first october so from first october till 31st march i think it will, it will be 6 months 6 6 better yeah right so 6 months so interest will be paid for 6 month period 6 upon 12 tell me the value guys 18000 into 6 percent and uh, 5 foot i'm getting 540 please cross check and tell me is it right or wrong is it correct or not Is this right, everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. And similarly, we will calculate the loan of interest on loan on Geet of Geeta. Geeta's loan was twelve thousand. We have just calculated it, and she will be paid at the rate of six percent per annum as well, and for the half year only, six upon twelve. Tell me the amount of loan, the amount of interest in her case. You guys are doing that. No, not responding to the questions. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Please, please tell me. I think three hundred and sixty. Yeah. Right. 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 Three hundred and sixty is correct. Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, this is the question, guys. I hope everything that we have discussed till this point is clear to all. Both these questions are clear to you. Anyone having any doubt can ask me. Saif, Alexander, Adil, Dhruv, Mariam, or anyone else. Uh, can you show the it, question so I can take a screenshot of it? Yes, sure. Just one. This is it. Okay. Done. Uh, Anybody having any doubt? Want to ask anything, Mariam, Kushi, or Mani? So oh, since no one is responding, no. so I guess everything is clear to all. Ah, uh, so guys, I'm giving you two questions for your homework, and I want all of you to attempt these questions. We will be discussing about these questions in the upcoming sessions as well, but. uh this is a question i want you to take this screenshot of it please i'll discuss this question with you in the next class as well but i still i, I want all of you to try this one please take this screenshot let me know when you are done yes sir done, done. done okay i'm i'm giving you one more question this one will be pretty simple uh this one this will be the question tell me if, if everything is clear on screen or not Yes, sir. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So please take this screenshot. This one is simple, uh, but the previous one will uh, need some effort. And I want. I still want you to try with that question. We will discuss uh, that question in the next session, and we will discuss more question based on interest on loan. And we will discuss a few new topic in the next session. So for the time being, this is it for today's session. I hope everything that we have discussed in this session is clear to all. So guys thank you so much for attending the session thank you sir we'll see you in the next class thank you so much goodbye thank you sir bye bye thank you sir